Good morning. I invite you to turn your Bibles with me to the book of Ruth, please. The book of Ruth. And Ruth is right after the book of Judges. Joshua, Judges, and Ruth. And it is a short book. And this morning we are going to read <clears throat> a few selected portions from this narrative here in the book of Ruth. Ruth 1, 1 to 5, and I'm going to go in, through the book and we're going to read some um, specific portions. Ruth 1, 1 to 5, now it came about in the days when the judges governed that there was a famine in the land and a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to sojourn in the land of Moab with his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech and the name of his wife Naomi and the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilion, Ephrathites of Bethlehem in Judah. Now they entered the land of Moab and remained there. Then Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They took for themselves Moabite women as wives. The name of the one was Arpa, and the name of the other Ruth, and they lived there about ten years. Then both Malon and Kilion also died, and the women, and the woman was bereft of her two children and her husband. Verse 8, and Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, go return each of you to her mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. Verses 15 to 18, and, they, and she said, then she said, behold, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and her gods, return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not urge me to leave you or turn back from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. Thus may the Lord do to me, and worse, if anything but death parts you and me. When she saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. Chapter 2, verse 20. Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, May he be blessed of the Lord who has not withdrawn his kindness to the living and to the dead. Again, Naomi said to her, The man is our relative. He is one of our closest relatives. Chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. Then he said, May you be blessed of the Lord, my daughter, you have shown your last kindness to be better than the first by not going after young men, whether poor or rich. Now, my daughter, do not fear. I will do for you whatever you ask for all my people in the city know that you are a woman of excellence. And finally, chapter 4, verse 13 onwards. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife, and he went into her, and the Lord enabled her to conceive, and she gave birth to a son. Then the women said to Naomi, Blessed is the Lord who has not left you without a Redeemer today, and may his name become famous in Israel. May he also be to you a restorer of life and a sustainer of your old age, for your daughter-in-law who loves you is and is better to you than seven sons has given birth to him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him in her lap and became his nurse. The neighbor women gave him a name saying, A son has been born to Naomi. So they named him Obed. His, he is the father of Jesse, the father of David. Now these are the generations of Perez. To Perez was born Hezron, and to Hezron was born Ram, and to Ram Abinadab, and, Ab, and to Abi, Aminadab was born Nashon, and to Nashon Salmon, and to Salmon was born Boaz, and to Boaz Obed, and to Obed was born Jesse, and to Jesse David. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we come before you this morning. We thank you for this wonderful opportunity to worship together in song and in prayer and in the reading and the studying of your word. 
Father, we thank you for the word that you have given us, that you have preserved it for us, for us to understand and see your character, to understand more about you. We pray, O Lord, that as we come with open hearts and open ears and open Bibles, we pray that you would speak to our hearts this morning. For we ask in Christ's name, amen. You may be seated, please. So this morning, we are going to take... <clears throat> a short break from our study of Ephesians, and we look into the Old Testament to study a concept that is going to become very important for us as we understand or as we continue to um, understand the book of Ephesians and as we continue with Ephesians next week. So we are right now in the book of Ruth, and today we are going to look at three main characters characters in this book, which is Naomi, Ruth, and Boaz. Now, if you were to look at the previous book, which is the book of Judges, it actually records a very dark period in the life of the nation of Israel. Now, it was a time before the kings, and, and it was a time when the Bible says that people did whatever was best in their eyes. People did whatever was best in their own eyes. So so they had become their own gods, and they were directing their own steps because there was no one to lead them or guide them, and they did whatever pleased them. But God, out of his great mercy, sent them leaders called judges. And he sent them to rule over them, to lead them and direct them. And we see those accounts in the book of Judges just before Ruth. But this morning, we come to this book of Ruth to study about a family that was extraordinarily different from all the other families that we come across in the book of Judges. And these these characters are different from the characters in Judges. And although the story unfolds during the same time period as the judges, there was, and there was still no king in Israel, in the, in, in the land of Israel, and this is the time period that this story is unfolding. So we will look at just these three main characters in this book this morning and as we study their lives and, and look at their circumstances and look at their reactions to life, we begin to notice one very unique characteristic trait that dominates the entire narrative of this book of Ruth. And it is the character of loyal love, or what the Hebrew Bible calls as chesed. And and I believe that this is um, a character attribute that we need to study this morning as we continue with our series in, uh, in, in the book of Ephesians, in order for us to understand God's generosity, in order for us to understand his compassion and his, his mercy and grace towards us who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. As what, as, and that is how Paul describes it as, as he writes that letter to the Ephesians. So, so this morning, it is described um, to us here in the actions of these three people. Naomi, Ruth, and Boaz. So we will study each of these three characters individually, and we will later on look at the concept of chesed, the concept of loyal love, before walking away with an application or a couple of applications this morning. But before we, but, uh, we, we begin with our first character, I want to briefly remind you of what is going on here in this story in, in the book of Um, Ruth, and perhaps give you a short introduction to the Hebrew word chesed. So we have the main character, who is Naomi, who is an Israelite woman, but she leaves Israel to go to the land of Moab with her husband and her two sons. And they go there in search of food because there is a famine in the land of Israel. And while they are there in in Moab, her husband and both her sons die. And they leave behind two Moabite women, two Moabite wives. 
So Naomi then decides to go back to Israel, and she asks her daughters-in-law to return to her to their parents' home. But Ruth, who is one of the daughter-in-law, refuses to go back, and she, and she returns with Naomi to the land of Israel to take care of her mother-in-law, Naomi. So once they are back, Ruth goes to work in a field um, as a gleaner, and she finds favor in the eyes of a man whose name is Boaz, who also happens to be one of their kinsmen redeemers. And Naomi, who is who is just a caring mother, advises Ruth to propose marriage to Boaz. And Boaz eventually fulfills his, his duty as a redeemer of the family, and he marries Ruth. And, and thereafter, we see that Ruth and Boaz are married, and they have a child, and the child happens to be um, the grandfather of King David. So that, that is the whole story in these four chapters. It's a short book. Um, that's the whole story of the book of Ruth, and I recommend you to, um, to read it sometime um, for you to be able to see some intricate details that, that we won't be able to cover this morning in our sermon. But, but every book in the Bible has a major theme, right? Every book of the Bible has a major theme. The entire Bible itself has a major theme, and we have uh, the story of Scripture. So, so the book of Ruth, the theme in this book here is the concept of loyal love or chesed. Chesed is a Hebrew word for loyal love. And, 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 the, and the meaning is so deep in the Hebrew that it cannot be captured in one single English word. English does not have a single word to, to elucidate the meaning of, of chesed. So it occurs roughly about 250 times in the Old Testament, and there are several treatments of that word uh, in, in very different contexts across the Hebrew Bible. But they all broadly lead to one single understanding. And the NASB translates it as loving kindness. The ESV says it is steadfast love. Loving kindness or steadfast love. And the NIV simply calls it kindness. And, and it is, a, and, it is um, and, and, and so there is this aspect of kindness in Hesed. It consists of an aspect of mercy. It's, it has an aspect of continuous, unending love for someone, an aspect of forgiveness, of deliverance and redemption, and they're all wrapped up together in one single word, Hesed. It is a, it is a relational term, and... And it is said that the best way to describe this term is by using a cluster of concepts. And those cluster of concepts define the attributes of God. So chesed here is described as something that, that encompasses all of this. It covers love, it covers mercy, grace, kindness, goodness, benevolence, loyalty, covenant faithfulness, steadfast love, loving kindness, and so on and so forth. So, so when Naomi and Ruth and Boaz show chesed, it means that they showed one of these characteristic traits, that, or, or they showed a characteristic trait that, that combined all of these qualities of love and mercy and grace and kindness and goodness. And a great example from the Bible is perhaps the very first usage of the word in the, New, in, in the Old Testament. And we see that in Genesis 18 and 19. In Genesis 18 and 19, we see Abraham negotiating with God. He is negotiating with God on behalf of his uh, nephew Lot. because God was going to destroy the city he was living in. And so while he's negotiating, he, um, uh, we see Abraham, he negotiates from 50 people down to 10 people. 
But God is not able to find even 10 righteous people in the city of Sodom. So God, deci God decides to do what God does best according to his, his own wisdom. And he decides to destroy the place of Sodom and Gomorrah. And he, so he sends two angels who come and, uh, and they urge Lot to leave the place before they burn it down. But he hesitates. Lot doesn't want to leave Sodom. So he's, he lingers around, but the angels don't leave him there. They seize him, they seize his wife and daughters, and they bring him out of the city. They, it's almost like a military extraction. They extract him out of, out of there, though he, he himself was unwilling to leave. But later on, he comes to his senses, and he speaks of this in Genesis 19, 19. He says, Behold, your servant has found favor in your sight, and you have shown me great kindness in saving my life. So this great kindness that God shows to Lot, that is chesed. Even though Lot was unwilling to leave the place, God still saved him. God still saved him because, because of God's faithfulness, because of God's character. Now think about it. There are many times in our lives when we are battling towards destruction ourselves. And we don't want to step out of that. We, we, we want to go where we want to go. But God, out of his great mercy, rescues us. And that is hesed. And here's how some scholars define it. They say God's chesed is the providential exercise of his power on behalf of the needy people with whom he has established a special relationship. And another Old Testament scholar puts it this way. He says, chesed is that quality that moves someone to act for the benefit of another person without taking into consideration the advantage it might bring to the person who expresses it. Without taking into consideration the advantage it might bring to the person who expresses it. So it is both undeserved and it is yet required because of the special relationship that the people have. The special relationship that God has with us and we see that in the New Testament too. The, the New Testament equivalent of chesed would be grace. It is amazing grace. And it is, it is the much enduring love that God has for his people in spite of their sin and in spite of their rebellion against him. And as another pastor puts it, Chesed is what compels God to show mercy, delay punishment, forgive iniquity and transgression and sin. Chesed is what makes Yahweh worthy of worship. Our God is a God of Chesed. So it is a unique characteristic of God, and we see this trait practiced in the book of Ruth. And I, 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 I don't know of any other religion in the world that can say the same thing about their God. And we see that in the pages of, of Scripture. And, and we see that here in the book of Ruth. So our first character this morning is Naomi. So the book of Ruth begins with an introduction to Naomi's family, as we read. And it describes her sorry condition. It describes her st so very sorry state of affairs. And I invite you to follow along in your Bibles if you can, please, um, since we'll be doing a little bit of back and forth with this story. So the story begins with, with Naomi's family in crisis. She's away in a foreign land, and her husband is dead, and her two sons are dead, and she's left with two widows who are her daughters-in-law. And they are Moabite women. They are not Israelite women, but they are Moabite women. And although the book of Ruth bears her name, 
we must know that the main character in this book is Naomi. It's not Ruth, but it's Naomi. So when the Lord was punishing Israel, and you, when, when you read Judges, you'll see this, when he was punishing Israel for their spiritual infidelity during the time of Judges, Naomi's husband, Elimelech, he takes his wife, he takes his sons, and they leave Israel to go to the land of Moab to find refuge with the Moabites. Now, they are a people that the Lord had commanded them, commanded the Israelites to have nothing to do with. The Israelites were not supposed to be associating with the Moabites. But instead of staying back and accepting what the Lord had brought upon them uh, and brought upon on, on Israel because of what they did, the family leaves the promised land. And they go away to a land of infidels. Now this is also ironic because, because they leave Bethlehem. Or Bethlehem, meaning the house of bread or a granary of bread. So they leave Bethlehem to look for bread among the Moabites. And as time progresses later on, when her husband dies and when her sons are taken away as well, Naomi decides to return to Israel because she hears that the Lord has blessed his people with food. Look at verse 6, chapter 1, verse 6. She hears that the Lord had visited his people in giving them food. So now there was food in Bethlehem. The Lord had begun to bless his people, Israel, once again. So the blessing had come back to Israel. And she wanted to go back to Israel to get that blessing. She didn't want to be a burden um, to her daughters-in-law. And definitely, she didn't want to expose them to an unknown nation or an unknown land or, or an uncertain future in the land of Israel. And, and the Israelites, anyways, did not have um, a general good disposition towards the Moabites. So she asks the girls to return to their mother's homes. And she tells them, go, get married, find rest, and settle down. So this just shows the, 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 the kind nature of a woman that Naomi was. She says in verse 8, go return each of you to her mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. May the Lord grant that you may find rest each in the house of her husband. That verse, that's verse 9. Now, now, it is very interesting to note that it is not their father's home that she is sending them to, or return, uh, she's asking them to return to, uh, which would be the normal usage, but she's asking them to, the, to return to their mother's home, or their mother's house. And in the Old Testament, that, that, that usage is always used in context of love and marriage. So if you're going back to your mother's home, you're talking about love and marriage. So, so she's sending them away with the blessing and with the hope that they will get married someday and find security for themselves. So she has their future in mind. She's not, she's, not, she's not intending that they be with her and serve her for the rest of their lives just because they were married to, to uh, her sons. And further she says, may the Lord deal kindly with you. Now this is the first usage of the word chesed in the book of Ruth. It is only used three times and Naomi uses this word to bless her daughter-in-law, daughters-in-law, and she's praying that the God of Israel show his loving kindness and his steadfast love and his gracious compassion to these women who were not Israelite, but Moabite women. Because these Moabite women had shown this kindness to her and her family. So, so we see Naomi wishing Hesed for her Moabite daughters-in-law, and later on, we see Ruth and Boaz showing the same kindness or, or the same chesed to Naomi as well. But neither, neither of the girls want to leave. 
They don't want to leave Naomi. And what does that tell us? It just, it just goes on to testify, the, to testify to the nature of this woman or the character of love and care that Naomi had for her daughters-in-law. I mean, none of them said good riddance and leave, you know? But they loved her, and they were prepared to go to a foreign land with her, and, and they were even ready to face any kind of uncertainty in, uh, in, in the land of Israel because of Naomi. But, but I think Naomi manages to change the mind of one of the girls, except for Ruth, because Ruth clings on to her. And we see that eventually they come back to Bethlehem and Naomi is still suffering from her sorrow of losing her husband or the sorrow of losing her sons. And she refuses to be called Naomi, which means pleasant. She doesn't want to be called as Naomi. 120 says, do not call me Naomi, call me Mara." For the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why do you call me Naomi, she says, since the Lord has witnessed against me and the Almighty has afflicted me. And we feel like that sometimes, don't we? When we go through troubles and, and sicknesses and and all kinds of troubles with our kids and with, with family and friends and, and work and whatnot. So here it just shows the condition of her heart. She was aching. She was in pain. She recognized that life was not pleasant anymore for her. She recognized that the hand of God had gone out against her. However, she is not angry at God, but she is, she, we must understand that she is in mourning. She is, she is in grief, just like Job. And some have even called Naomi's condition to be somewhat similar to that of Job's, having lost everything. And Naomi recognized that whatever has happened to her has happened because the Lord let it happen. And we are blessed if we recognize that too. So in spite of all her suffering, she continues to be kind-hearted toward her Moabite daughter-in-law who had come back to be with her, Ruth. And, and the, the, that just tells me, just reminds me that I'm so unlike her. And some of us here too. We get grumpy, don't we, you know, when, when things don't go our way, when we are hurt. We get grumpy. We are not nice towards others because we are in pain and we cannot be nice to other people. But we see her, her kindness or kind-heartedness and in the way she interacts with Ruth. Naomi even says that it is, it is her own responsibility towards Ruth that she finds a permanent dwelling or a husband or a home for her daughter-in-law. And so it just, it, it happens that, that just as she hoped, uh, Boaz pursues Ruth and she marries, and he marries her. And Ruth gives birth to a son and the women of Bethlehem end up calling Naomi what? They call her blessed. So N Naomi's situation gets reversed. She has remedied, she has been remedied. She has found redemption. She has gone from being called Mara to the one who is called Blessed. She thought she was empty because she had lost everything, but now she is full. She has been filled. And, and I believe that, that her demeanor, her character kind of sustained her in all of this. So, so we see Naomi showing chesed in, in many ways here in the book of Ruth. And there are a lot of instances in this story where, where Naomi is living that out, even in her pain, even in her grief, even in her sorrow. She, she shows loyal love to Ruth, the Moabite daughter-in-law. And she does everything to find security for Ruth. And that is chesed. 
That is Hesed. And then we come to, to Ruth, which, uh, who is our second character in the story. And Ruth is the Moabite wife of Malon, one of Naomi's sons. And the book of Ruth does not shy away from emphasizing that. In fact, we see that in five different places throughout the book. She is called Ruth the Moabite. She is not an Israelite. She is a Moabite. She is a foreigner, an alien. And the book repeatedly shows us that. Ruth the Moabite. And, and she speaks very little in this book of Ruth. Even though most, most of the book... Um, or more than half of the book is, is direct speech by the characters in the story, Ruth is not saying much. And I think it's worth noticing that the only book in the Bible, in the Old Testament, that is named after a non-Israelite is the book of Ruth. That, that just goes on to um, say so much about her character. So when her mother-in-law decides to go back to Israel, she, and, and she pressurizes her daughters-in-law to return to their homes, Ruth just refuses to go back. She refuses to find refuge when her mother-in-law had no refuge for herself. When, her, when, when Naomi pressurizes her and, and, and the pressure intensifies, we see that Ruth's response also intensifies. And she says one of the most beautiful words in this book. Look at uh, chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. But Ruth said, Do not urge me to leave you or turn back from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. And your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. Thus may the Lord do to me and worse, if anything but death parts you and me. Now, now Ruth's disposition is, uh, here is more hurt than being resentful of, of Naomi. She's, she's, she's kind of begging her mother-in-law to stop pressurizing her to leave. And, and she says, do not urge me to leave you. And the, the Hebrew word that is used here, azab, means to abandon somebody. And she is pleading before Naomi not to let her abandon her. She says, please don't let me abandon you. Because Ruth does not want to forsake her mother-in-law in her old age. And she already feels obligated towards her to stick with her mother-in-law and to take care of her when she has become old. Now we need to ask, how is our relationship with, with our own uh, parents, our, our own relatives who have become old? How are we showing the kindness of the Lord to our parents, or our grandparents who have become old? Here she says, where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. And Ruth is not willing to abandon Naomi. She's, 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 even willing to, uh, she's not even willing to leave her side, it says. She wants to go and live with Naomi. She wants to go with Naomi wherever she goes so she can be with her and take care of her. I mean, Ruth did not have to do this. She's, she's very much in her childbearing age. She could have gone and married someone and, and lived happily, but she does not want to do that. She's wanting to do for Naomi what her own son would have done for her. And she is committing herself to doing this until both of them are dead. Wow. Something like, like till death do us part. She was okay to sacrifice all her comfort than to send a poor widow away empty to a land that she had previously abandoned. So Ruth makes a declaration and a pledge of allegiance to the God of Israel here. 
He's, she says, your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. And it is one of the most significant statements in the book of Ruth. Your God will be my God. So her love for her mother-in-law and her, and her loving kindness, her chesed toward Naomi, caused her to pledge allegiance to Yahweh, the God of Israel. Now one might ask, well, did she not see how, how the God of Israel treated Naomi? Did she not see how, how Naomi's husband was taken and her, uh, her two daughters were, uh, two sons were taken? Then why does she want to do, uh, to do this? Or why, why does she want to accept the God of Israel her, as her own God? And I think... It is, the text doesn't say, say it here, but I think it's because what she had seen in the life of Naomi. Ruth had come to recognize that there was something different about the God of Israel. There's something different about the people of Israel who had this benevolent relationship with God, who had this benevolent relationship with one another. They had a living relationship with God, and, and, and that caused them to live like that towards others. So she had come to know the God of Israel through Naomi and through Naomi's life. Can people look at our own lives and say, yeah, I want to follow him or I want to be like him or I want to be like her? Reminds me of the song, and they'll know we are Christians by our love by our love. Yes, they will know we are Christians by our love. So we need to ask ourselves that question, do people really see that in us? And further, Ruth here is, is willing to place herself under a curse if she does not fulfill her covenant loyalty to her mother-in-law. She says, may the Lord do to me and worse if anything but death parts you and me. Or as the NIV says, be it ever so severely. So, so Ruth is, is not kidding. She is absolutely certain of what she wants. She wa she's committed to Naomi, to taking care of her. So much that, that she's willing to place herself under a curse if she ever backed off. Now this is called hesed. This is her hesed towards Naomi. Her loyal love, her lo loving kindness, her steadfast love, and she declares that devotion to her mother-in-law. And where do you suppose that she learned that from? I mean, they don't teach that in Moab, do they? They don't. She probably learned it from the life of Naomi and her husband. So, so later on, we find that Ruth um, encounters Boaz at the threshing floor, and, and her, her, if you read the account, her actions um, at the threshing floor might seem highly suspect, highly irregular, but they are not. We should probably study that someday. But, but here at the threshing floor, Ruth proposes marriage to Boaz. And Boaz replies in chapter 3, verse 10. She's, he says, May you be blessed of the Lord, my daughter. You have shown your last kindness to be better than the first by not going after young men, whether poor or rich. Now, my daughter, do not fear. I will do for you whatever you ask, for all my people in the city know that you are a woman of excellence. So, so Boaz blesses Ruth, and, she, and he calls her blessed and, and says that, that her marriage proposal itself is an act of chesed towards him. It is, it is much greater than what she had done for Naomi because of her kindness towards Naomi. Ruth was even willing to marry an older person. She was willing to fulfill her duty towards Naomi by bringing in a kinsman redeemer into her family. And she was the only one who could do that. So this is the third usage of, of the word chesed in the book of Ruth. And it's explicitly attributed to, to Ruth. So, so Boaz here is calling Ruth a worthy woman. 
a worthy woman. In, in Hebrew, it is Eset Hayel. So, because in, in, in chapter 2, we see that people call him Gibor Hayel, a worthy man. So what he is doing is he's elevating Ruth, who is a Moabite, to his own state. He was not an ordinary person. He was not an average Israelite person. He was a very important figure in, in the life of Israel. And remember, a young woman proposing to an older man, a gleaner, proposing to a landowner. So, so we see Boaz views Ruth's forwardness as kindness. He, he calls her a noble woman or a woman of excellence. And eventually, Boaz, uh, sorry, Boaz uh, does, does redeem Naomi's estate, and he marries Ruth. And Ruth demonstrates this chesed towards Naomi and Boaz. She is, she is helping provide food for her family. She is working hard in the fields. And she accepts what her mother-in-law instructs her to do. And finally, Naomi even adopts uh, Ruth's son as her own. And Lu Ruth lives out this chesed in a treatment of Naomi and Boaz. And, and we finally come to our third character in our story, which is Boaz. So he's a, he's a worthy man. He's, he's a man of substance. He, he has a lot of wealth. He has, he's a man of standing in the community. And at, at, at the beginning of chapter 2, it tells us the kind of person that Boaz was. And he comes into the fields. And the first thing that he says, the, he, he tells the reapers is, the Lord be with you. And they answer him, the Lord bless you. That's the first thing that he says. I mean, you, you find that, that kind of thing in some churches even today, in some ethnic churches. You, you go there and, and the first thing they tell you is, praise the Lord. That's, that's their um, greeting to you. They wish each other praise the Lord or the Lord be with you. So, so Boaz is a person who recognizes Yahweh as the God who is gracious, who dwells with his people because people say the Lord be with you as well. So he knows that God rewards people for their acts of kindness and devotion to one another. So Boaz comes across Ruth. She's gleaning in the fields and he inquires about her. He speaks kindly to her and talks to her and, she, and he tells her to stick around and not go anywhere else to glean. He even instructs his workers, you know what, leave some sheaves behind for her to pick up. So, so, and he does all this because he knows what Ruth had done for her mother-in-law. That she had not left her destitute um, in, in, in Israel. So he speaks to Ruth and he pronounces a blessing from the Lord, the God of Israel. In 2.12, we see that. He understands that whoever comes under the wings of Yahweh, the God of Israel, will be taken care of. They can find refuge under him. So Boaz is a compassionate man. He is kind, he is graceful, and he is generous towards Ruth and the Moabite women, and, and therefore he personifies what Chesed is by, in the way he deals with, with Ruth. And I want, and because we are running out of time, I want you to read um, this, this entire book of Ruth um, at home, and you'll see how he, he demonstrates kindness towards them. He says, may he be blessed of the Lord who has not withdrawn his kindness to the living and to the dead. So this is the second usage of the word. And, and, and the way the sentence is structured literally means I bless him to Yahweh. Naomi is making an exclamation of praise to Boaz and commends Boaz to God of Israel. 
So, although Boaz was one of Naomi's kinsmen redeemers, his, 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 his actual responsibility ends with the redemption of the property. He was not obligated to marry Ruth in any way because there was another person, remember, he found at the gate. But he still go, goes ahead and marries her because the, the law of the leveret marriage only applied to immediate relatives, and he was not an immediate relative. He was second in line, and he still fulfills his chesed love for, for Naomi and Ruth. And, and Boaz shows this chesed uh, by marrying her. Even though it would impair his own inheritance, he, w- he still goes ahead and, and does that. So... So we see all of these three characters in the story displaying what is called as loving kindness. And we see God testifying about himself and proclaiming his own loving kindness or chesed in the book of Exodus. Exodus 34, 6 to 7 says, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, which is chesed and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love, which is again chesed, for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. So God has this enduring love for his people, and he shows this to them because of, his, because of who God himself is, because of his own character. God shows mercy. God shows steadfast love to, to those who he has a covenant with. And he binds himself to them eternally to to do good to them. And once God binds himself to someone, he doesn't let go. And that is why we sing praises to him. And that is why we we rejoice in him and celebrate him as our God. And at the the beginning, we saw, um, um, saw the first usage of the word in Genesis. But remember what we read in the scripture portion this This morning. Zechariah 7, 9. Thus has the Lord of hosts said, dispense true justice and practice kindness and compassion each to his brother and do not oppress the widow or the orphan, the stranger or the poor, and do not devise evil in your hearts against one another. Do not devise evil in your hearts against one one another. And so we see the prophet Zechariah calling people to render true judgment and to show loving kindness, to show chesed or kindness to one another. And that is what the, God of, uh, the, the word of God is calling us to. It is calling us to live out this trait of chesed. We receive this loving kindness from God and we show that to people around us. So we, we, we saw, this, we saw this, this thing in this loving kindness in the life of Naomi, who lost everything, who found a daughter, who cared for her, and, he, and she was more interested in her wel- welfare than her own future, who later received the blessing of a son. We saw it in Ruth, a foreigner to the covenant, who left all her security to care for the poor widow, who found a husband and she had a son and she was blessed because she showed Hesed and Boaz, an upright Israelite who was generous towards a foreigner, towards a Moabite woman. And it just turned out that, that the lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ came through them because of what they did. And, and I invite you to consider how you and I may show Hesed to people around us. What does that mean? And and even if it means even if it means that they don't deserve it, we ought to show chesed because God shows it to us. And that is what we will learn when we go into Ephesians chapter 2, um, Lord willing, next week. The gracious compassion of God, the grace of God. Let me leave you with a reading from the New Testament and a command from our Lord Jesus Christ. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a lawyer, asked him 
a question to test him, teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Chesed, the loyal love of God. And I pray that, that we may practice this chesed towards one another. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that um, you have preserved your word, both the Old Testament and the New Testament, and you teach us from it so many wonderful things. Lord, and today as we saw the concept of your loyal love towards your people, your loving kindness, your grace, your compassion, your mercy upon those whom you have made, we pray that we, we would learn from it to be able to show the same kindness towards one another. Even though they don't deserve it, Lord, help us show it to them because that is what it is, that is what grace is. And we thank you for the great grace that we have in our Lord Jesus Christ that you saved us by grace alone, in Christ alone, through faith alone. And Father, we pray as we come back next week, Lord, we pray that you would prepare our hearts to, to understand this in Christ. And as we go out this week, Lord, we pray that we might put this, this into practice in our own lives. Thank you for, for hearing us. Thank you for speaking to our hearts. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.